this is the bit where you talk about... The, it's a sort of process thing. It's, it's a, what, 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 what the discussion should be and what you would like from a Brexit exchange. Or is it, is it useful to have a Brexit exchange? Is this process of gathering in the same room useful? Is it useful if it's cross-industry or would you rather it was just your own folks? Um, is it important that the rest of the European, that it's more pan-European? Is it important that it's government and business? What, what are the requirements? So I'm, I'm, we have a sort of central table here of people who I know have sort of signed up to the idea of Brexit exchange and have thoughts on this. And maybe I'll, I'll, I'll start with the table here, but essentially this is your free form bit in which to say whether you think this is a waste of time or whether you think it's a good idea or, or what physically and, 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 and practically you would like to see happen. Julia, can I just ask you to sort of kick us off? KPMG, you're the Brexit go-to person at KPMG, as I, as I gather. That's right, thank what, you. What, what does a good conversation or a constructive conversation consist of? And I think as we've heard from all the contributors um, today, it's, it's a really complex environment we find ourselves in and the more you scrape the surface and dig down into the detail the more complex it becomes um, we say back in the office all the time that every day is a school day on brexit because you're just learning really fast all the time so i think any fora that helps accelerate pulling the different perspectives together the different lenses that we can all bring i think will, is 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 helpful um, we're focused, I mean, we talk to all sorts of sectors, as others um, who've spoken today do. Um, we, we're trying very much to focus on the facts and focus on the, on the detail, looking at detail in sectors, but individual, you know, retail's not retail, the whole range in there, mm. really understanding the risks and the opportunities that this might, might bring. And building up a comprehensive story, a cohesive story around that, I think, is really important so that um, we will be, people, business will be listened to. Mm. I'll just read you what a Brexit exchange is. It's a process, not an event, with a consultation period that culminates with a sector summit. So essentially, you'd have multiple Brexit exchanges. Following each summit, a communique will be produced to be issued to the UK government, the European Parliament, the Commission, and each EU member state government and parliament setting out the key points of common interest and concern, concern raised by participants. So there's a sort of practical output, there's a consultation, a summit, and a communique is, is a proposal. That's the proposal. Um, Julia, what is the sort of appropriately, what is the appropriate level? Is it business? Is it service businesses? Is it retail? Or is it Toy shops. I mean, where, where do you, what, when we say a sector, what, what, what is the kind of right, the right level, do you think, for the conversation to be practical? Because one wants to get into the weeds, one wants to get into the yeah, detail. Yeah, but not too, not but, too far down, exactly. But, but otherwise, um, yeah, it's... Yeah, so um, one of the lenses that we apply, um, using retail as an example, with what are interconnected businesses businesses that are absolutely rooted here and mobile businesses and they will all have different takes on the impact right. the, diff the, the loss of the four freedoms are going to have on them again both in terms of risk and opportunity so it has to be detailed enough to be meaningful um, without us again as you say getting getting lost in the weeds and the sector perspective i think is really important but as, uh, as others have commented Today, the banks want to know what's happening in the real economy, and the real economy retailers want to know whether they're going to be able to borrow money to expand um, in the future. So we need to we need to maintain a connectivity across the sectors. Absolutely, we would say. Okay, Alex, can I ask you why British Council is interested in Brexit exchange and what it it, it would sort of hope for hope hope that it achieves? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think this is quite a fascinating discussion for us to be involved in because we've done a number of dialogues already this year for our sectors and we don't often associate ourselves with business or industry, for example. We work very much in education, in culture, in science, in, in language. 
Um, but we felt initially it was extremely important to strengthen and renew some of the relationships after the referendum. So we decided to set up some dialogues. Um, earlier this year, we had an event over in, in Berlin, uh, in Madrid. We've had some digital webinars talking about quite specific issues, some of the challenges, some of the opportunities that may arise. Um, and, and as it's gone along, it's become quite clear that there is, at least for our sectors, a broad consensus about some of the issues we'll be tackling. Um, and that's been extremely helpful. And what we're looking to do now is to kind of conclude this series of events that we're calling it um, at the end of next month, early July, and actually produce some kind of a communique, very similar to this um, uh, process, if you like, mm. uh, which is also addressed to EU and UK negotiators, to Parliament, um, but also to the sectors. Um, I think part of this, just sort of touching on some of the points that were made earlier today, uh, what's clearly very important is getting a, a good understanding of some of the implications. You know, not just from a UK point of view, but across Europe. Um, and I think in our, in our Madrid event, for example, it became far more important for us to talk about how Europe would, would be positioned on a global, you know, increasingly global stage um, post-Brexit and trying to think about some of the mutual benefits, uh, mutual advantage that we can be considering. Um, so I think that's incredibly important. And so it's really a case of doing a, an extensive sit rep, if you like. Uh, and once you have that, and you have a better analysis of where the gaps might be, um, where, where they could be covered. Um, and uh, so I think it's, it's very interesting for us at least to come and sort of listen into these discussions, maybe offer some insight as well. Um, you know, education, culture, science adds a tremendous amount of benefit to wider society, to society as a whole, across many European societies. Uh, and, and countries. Well, when you've done your Brexit yeah. exchange type events in Madrid, where was it? Madrid and um, Berlin. Berlin. Yeah. How big was the? I mean, how big were, were these events? It's these about like... um, a maximum of 100 delegates each time, and right. I think we sort of recognise we we represent three mini sectors, as it were, not so small. But by bringing them together, they have very common themes and, and sort of common challenges. Um, and by trying to bring universities and theatres and galleries. Um, you know, language schools and student bodies together, you're, you're beginning to get a better picture of what some of those uh, complications might be and what some of the opportunities might be. But, and in those things, was it, did it tend just to be very big players like universities or did you have some small businesses or relatively we, small ones? No, we tried to, tried to keep balance. as balanced as we yeah. could and, and where possible have um, as many other European countries um, present. Uh, trying to maintain the attendance of UK delegates as, as little as we can, actually. Um, I think it's around the 20% to 30% mark in, in our participation right. so far. And we've had some representation from every Euro uh, EU member state so far in, in okay. uh, contributing so the Europeans one way or were up another. for it. We're, we're, we're up for talking, basically. Definitely. I think yeah. it's interesting also to see something we found in the UK, especially uh, at the earlier part of this year, is um, to what extent has consultation taken part with sectors? Um, and when we were in Germany, there was a sort of sense that maybe some of the thinking hadn't been as advanced in, in some, of the, some other countries. And that's going back to the point that Stefan made earlier today, uh, that Brexit is not so high on the agenda. Um, but I think going back to another point around avoiding having hostages taken during you know, the, the outcome of, of Brexit, it's clearly very important to get a firm understanding of what some of the outcomes will be. Yeah. OK, so I'm interested in everybody else uh, just having a say on whether this is useful or not. You don't have to speak, but it helps. Yes, we'll take one over there, and then who's going to be next? We'll take the two over there at the back. Yeah, go ahead. It, the, the very difficult balance to try and strike if you're, a, if you're a captain of industry or representing a sector is bringing forward the information to government and the media that they should all be worried about, focus on in order to avoid the worst and not alienating them because you start sounding like a, a, a Ramona. The unseemly haste with which the CEO of Nissan ran to number 10 to do his own deal suggests to me that nobody should be worried about individual sectors getting, getting their points across. I, you know, the, there will, be be there will be sectors that are better at it than others, but essentially, you know, with their lawyers, they will make their cases, and they may or may not get a hearing. If you want to make the kind of impact that Brexit exchange should be wanting to make, you need to stay at a high enough level that you can start taking from different sectors those things that they have in common about right. issues and translate that 
to the media on the one hand, government on the other hand, Brussels the third hand, whereby these can become meaningful sound bites that will positively influence the debate. It's an extraordinarily difficult thing to pull off. You will not succeed as Brexit Exchange in doing that unless you get a better representation of industry sitting in this room than you have at the moment. Right. Okay. Well, that's a, that, that's a, a, an interesting point. Now, we had a couple over there. Yes, sir. Um, uh, my points made in some degree by the, the, uh, the speaker just now, yeah. the media needs to be engaged in this process. Um, there are lots of myths and lots of prejudice uh, in, the, in, in the whole of the Brexit uh, communication. Um, there are a lot of trade associations, and a lot of trade associations are either doubling up on what we're doing and what we want to say, or they're missing it totally. And I think the Brexit exchange should be pan-European in the way that was described just now. Yeah. We should hold the media to account. Uh, we should have a dialogue with government. And more importantly, this is a, uh, an opportunity to start educating people about what it really means to all of us and what the future holds in a pan-European way for all of us, both across the channel and in this country. Okay, uh, we had a gentleman in front of you. There we go, yeah. Hello, I'm Martin Solday from King's College London, the Strand Group. We work with Whitehall to try and educate people about how British government works. And one of the really interesting things I think has come out today is I think a bit of thought needs to go into the process of how business talks to UK central government and the relationship there. I think in our experience, Whitehall wants to talk, but they're not quite sure how they go about doing that. And they're always worried that this will become too adversarial and they'll end up being criticised in a way they think is unfair. So I think today's a really good conversation because we can start to work out how we approach UK government and listen to their concerns. Right. So one of the, thing, one of the things is, is, is how useful the trade associations are and how much Brexit exchange is an alternative or is different to, to, to trade associations. How many of you actually are part of a trade association or a, a member of a trade association or have a trade... Or, and, 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 and to any of you, just talk to me about what, what Brexit exchange might or might not bring that the trade association isn't already bringing. What is the point of a Brexit exchange if you've got a trade association? Yeah, so over there. I think the point raised earlier is about the horizontal uh, issues. So we can have the vertical ones of the trade association, right. but bringing, I think, the trade associations to Brexit exchange will also allow yeah. sharing of best practice and opportunities and challenges across sectors. Can I just ask you what, when we say sectors, if there was going to be a sector summit or there's going to be a summit, what would you like? Would you like it to be like this, which is a bit of everybody, or like this on steroids, so it really is a bit of everybody, or would you think something like a sort of retail day or a or a car car industry day, a pharmaceutical day? No, I think um, the uh, individual um, industries can have their own days. I think the pur purpose of Brexit, and it could be that you could do a format where you have a morning of work groups and then reporting back to uh, all, all the other groups as well. So it might give it a bit more dialogue, a bit more um, actionable uh, solutions. Yeah. Got a gentleman at the back, yeah. Jeremy Kane. I'm an independent European public affairs advisor. I've been doing it for 30 years. I've lost a bit of hair. I would like to say how completely correct the last two or three speakers have been. Brexit is a political decision. We are not able, none of us, to counter that political decision with political alternatives. What we can do and what I think the Brexit exchange is uniquely qualified to do, and I don't think it's a job that can be done by the trade associations, although they can be a part of it. The Brexit exchange is uniquely qualified to present the facts, the consequences of Brexit on a regular, ongoing basis, just as we've heard is currently the case in the construction centre. It's the economy. Stupid. Brexit exchange 
the facts. So it, it, for you, the communique idea is the sort of useful. You have a consultation, you have a summit, you produce a communique that tells people what it is that's needed or happening or what's uh, not needed or what needs to be avoided. Uh, do any, any more of you, people who haven't spoken yet, want to share fears, hopes, procedural kind of nervousness, express a kind of general sense of uh, disorientation or discombobulation at what's going on or your ability to, 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 to match it? Any? <laughs> Go on, Alex. So, uh, just a couple of points based on our experience of running similar exchanges. I think what's, we've been quite mindful with the timing. Um, and you do get this sense that there's a narrow window of time to sort of influence or advise um, how negotiations might go down. Um, so I think that's important to, to bear in mind. And the other thing is, as I mentioned earlier, having wide pan-European participation, um, sort of sitting down with your opposites and talking to counterparts in other European countries, because these are the people that um, will also be subjected to consequences that may be able to work with you to yeah. capitalize on opportunities and will remain our neighbors. You know, it's, we've heard it uh, several times, but we're leaving the EU, but we're not leaving Europe. Um, and I think at least if our communique statement, whatever comes out, you know, sort of end of June, early July, if it has no impact whatsoever, at the very least, we have strengthened our relationships with our partners, which yeah. is incredibly important. Which might be useful. Yeah. Um, so I think going back to the sort of the political rhetoric, I think there's enormous value in, in finding a way of, of, of pushing through that and strengthening it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go through, through the table here on, on, on their views of what a constructive Brexit exchange would consist of. Rob, we heard from you earlier, uh, Mishkon Derea, lawyer, you're already signed up. What, 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 what are you hoping for? Well, I think the most important thing is to actually, and this is odd for a lawyer to say, but actually to listen um, and work out what people actually want and need um, rather than second-guessing that. Uh, my personal view is that the real value lies um, in this being pan-European with the focus outside of the UK. And as I said before, I think some of these key horizontal issues, they ought to be common to business both on both sides of the channel. And it may be that some of them get more traction on the other side of the channel than they do in, in the UK. Yeah. But certainly to avoid that option would be a mistake. How many people here are already working with European counterparts, trade associations in Brussels, people in the industry. How many people are actually in contact fairly regularly with other Europeans? Yeah, okay, so quite a bit. And how many of you are not in contact with other Europeans? Okay, so it's hard to tell, really. Uh, a lot of don't knows. Um, Paul, what are you hoping for a Brexit exchange? I'd look back at the... Um the four points that you raised at the beginning, I'm sure you'll come to them at the end as well, and they, they feel slightly utopian, having sort of listened to the discussion. So do you, but go beyond politics and talk about business. Well, they're so interrelated, the politics, the regulation, <laughs> the business, that it's very difficult to do that, I think. The, the, the fourth of your points about being getting beyond the idea of Brexit being a good idea, I think people have really struggled with, actually, because it's natural for people to focus on the risks, and you, you, you got a fairly blank answer to your appeal for opportunities but I think my experience and our experience about interacting with this government on Brexit is absolutely what the gentleman over there said is that if you if you allow yourself to be typified as a Bramona they're really not interested in listening to yet more people telling them why it's a terrible idea and it's all going to end in disaster I think Paul Drexler's tone and I think a lot of it is around tone if you get the tone right and you accept that we've made a decision and that we're going in this direction and act helpfully to try and make sure that we uh, make the best success of it and see the opportunities. I think that will be helpful. And then finally, on the sort of sector thing, my experience with the Food and Drink Federation, I think Ian Wright does a, a very good job in difficult circumstances because he has uh, all sorts of competing members, sometimes asking him to um, lobby in completely different areas. So if you get too far below the levels of principle into that bottom up, you're going to find it very difficult to get a communique that everybody will sign up to. So I, I think you probably will have to move back up to the level of principle. Right. That's an interesting uh, point. Stefan. Um, I, I want to take up the horizontal <laughs> argument because um, I think for, for this extraordinary thing like Brexit, 
um, uh, dialogue forums like this are, 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 are very necessary. And, uh, but if I look to the general thing, horizontal cooperation between businesses is crucial. I represent a horizontal uh, business association, and I would not say that we are us useless because of Brexit exchange. We as businesses have to understand that our impact on politics are only uh, are, will get bigger when we have uh, forums or associations which go beyond country, uh, um, um, company or sector level beyond. So the more representative uh, uh, we are, the more impact we have in the political dialogue. And this is something which we shall not forget. It's not just, uh, it's not just Brexit where horizontal aspects are. It's in general that, 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 that we need a better understanding for business purposes uh, in our counterparts on the national or international yeah. level. And can I ask you, Stefan, do you think the others are really interested in talking to us in a Brexit exchange? I mean, it's, it's quite a sort of British-centric thing because we're Brexiting and they're not. Um, I, think, I think to bring people together here, like, like in Brexit exchange, um, um, is a unique opportunity for governments or other counterparts to, to, uh, on, a very, on this very special and prominent issue to make a dialogue. I think if, if we come to the, to the daily basis, the, uh, my represent, representation argument shall be crucial. I think the, um, as a top association you have, where, where you organize compromises, uh, on, on many issues, you can you can you can effectively communicate with policy decision makers uh, in, in the Commission, like we do that on Business Europe or on other issues. So it's it's uh, um, um, the more facts we deliver and not only represent our own economic interests, the more insights we deliver uh, from interactions between sectors and companies, the more effective our vo effectively our voice will be heard on the policy, policy decision makers. I, I'm, I was on the other side for 26 years. I shall know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Stefan, you've made quite clear today you know what you're talking about. Um, I'm going to draw things to a close. I've got, I, does anybody want to add anything, subtract anything even? Does anybody want to say anything? Comments on Brexit exchange? Um, I'm going to ask Jonathan Lurl to come up and say a last, a last word. I want to thank you. I think I, I have actually found it more detailed, more constructive, and that we, have, we haven't avoided the politics. You're right, Paul, of course it comes. And we haven't, you, can, you have been able to read things that people have said that are basically, why are we doing this mad thing? Why don't we stay in? Um, but the truth is, it has felt to me a little more uh, constructively sort of focused on the process and, the, uh, and getting results from it and some of, the, uh, some of the risks if we don't get it right. So I want to thank you. But um, let me hand over to Jonathan to sort of close the morning before we all go for lunch. I was going to say, I'm, I'm aware I'm up against a dinner bell, so I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, just to, first of all, a big thank you to all of you for coming and giving up a, a Thursday morning to be here. Um, and, of course, a big thanks to our participants. Special thanks to Stefan for coming from Germany, especially for this. Um, I think you all appreciate the job that Evan has done today. Thank you very, very much. Um, of course, the unsung heroes are the Dodds events team who actually got down with the logistics of setting up this. And I have to say, an amazing location. I have never been up in this building before, and it's just stunning. So well done to the Dodds team. Um, the pan-European thing that was coming up at the end, subject to funding, we proposed to have Brexit exchange events, Germany, Madrid, Rome. We want to take this around Europe because it is important that business from all over Europe can feed in. The whole idea about Brexit Exchange was its business putting its facts and figures forward. And so, yes, the communique will be fairly factual. We're not taking sides. We've said all along, Brexit Exchange, it's, it's, it's not for Brexit. It's not against Brexit. It's about Brexit. And so that's what we want to, to take forward. Uh, I know we have a, a session tomorrow to, to digest what happened today. I think it's been pretty good today. So I thank you all. We have a website. We have all your email addresses. So we will be in touch, but keep in touch with us. If you have any ideas, anything you want to feed in, do come to us, and I hope we'll see you all again. Probably not all in, this, in the room at the same time. We'll probably do it by sector as we go forward. So we'll see some of you on different days. So from Some Frontier, 
crossing borders from Dodds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.